Okay, sum up. When? Sum up mankind's foray into the future. I want this. This will be the introduction to a book about the future. It will then be read in a hundred years' time and go, Carl Pilkington was the most prophetic genius that's ever walked the earth. These are his words from 2010. Just some predictions. Just, predict think, no, just, just you... sum it up. Just sum it up. Um, I believe... Start off with... I, Carl Pilkington, believe that mankind in the future will... OK, start off and with that what, Just have, like, a top five. Well, no, or just... just well, maybe just predictions. Just predictions. Yeah. OK, yeah, OK, yeah. So and, then a little, and then a little thing to remember. And remember ye this. So I, Carl Pilkington, predict that in the future mankind will... Uh, start off with that. Start off with that sentence. I've given you that one. All right, I'm Carl... And uh, the future. He's already gone off road. It's, it's a scary road. place, right. but the future's going to happen. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right? There's no getting away from that. Yep. Mm. Mm. Okay. Your predictions are. Mm. Well, we're 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 all. Uh, mm. It's not a sound bite. No, keep going. I'm going to game space. Okay, game space. Go this is a book. I've got. I've got to think about. I okay. Don't get it think. Wrong. Okay. Think first. Think and then then say it. Okay. Starting from now, these words of wisdom will be inscribed on a wall of a museum one day. Proceed. Wall of a lavatory. Will it? I think trousers <laughs> are going to be stopped being made. <laughs> Just because right. you see, you see kids now. They've got pants around their ankles. They're going further and further down. So I think, I think they're, they're, that's evolution. Just getting rid of the trouser. Right. It's just dropping naturally. <laughs> that's the evolution of the trouser because it's dropping incredibly well, down now, the arse. You can see now, you see kids' underpants. So they're just dropping. Yeah. I think they'll get to a point when they just don't bother wearing them anymore. Right. Prediction one. <laughs> okay, that's an amazing make, one. They'll stop making trousers in the future. Good. Okay. Uh. We're going to get weaker. We, we, that's already that's already happened. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to say, you know, an apple a day keeps a doctor away. Now they're saying eat five fruits. <laughs> right. So we've definitely that's that's evidence. You can't argue with that. <laughs> I probably put that first because the guy's right. What's number two? So swap that round. Okay, that's number Give one. Give him the pants second. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to die. I'm gonna die. Okay, they number used three. to say, and half of the day, keep the dogs away. They used to say, they used to say, put your trousers up. Now they say, put them down again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna end such fucking trouble. Number three. <laughs> right, number three. Oh, the scholars are now waiting with bated breath when they find yeah. this old scroll and they go, Ooh, mm. what can number three be? Uh, I reckon we'll blend all our food. <laughs> oh, God! No, because they the... thought they were going to make a point about race. <laughs> yeah. I never thought we'll blend all our food <laughs> <laughs> like, like they do for amazing. babies you mean just oh. yeah I just think oh. when you think about all the stuff we eat now cavemen oh. chewing on big lumps of meat yeah, yeah. we had wisdom teeth yep mm. now they say we'll take them out you're not using them yep. why not using them because your food's soft yep mm. sorbet yep. soups <laughs> yeah uh you know, everything's softer, just isn't it? When you get an avocado, yeah. they say, yeah. is it soft? Everyone's squeezing the food before they buy it. Yeah. No one wants anything tough. Yeah. Mm. So I think I think chewing is a sort of thing of the, the past. past. We haven't got the time to chew. Everyone's like, hurry up, eat that. You mm. don't have to go out for dinner with Ricky. He's like, hurry up. <laughs> like, I'm still eating well, it. Well, he does blend his food, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so blending food. Great. Uh, I reckon... Uh, what else do we do now? So I've done teeth. Mm. Done trousers. I've come up with this idea. <laughs> it's sort of like glasses, but you can live wherever you want to live. What do you mean? Everything that's real, you're not looking at that anymore. This is really the future. I'd put this at number ten. <clears throat> This is like... We're only doing five, fuck me. Oh, so the, you, what you mean is that you look through the glasses and 
instead of seeing what the real world, you see a tropical what paradise. What you want to see. So if you're if if you're a young kid and you like the idea of living in the urban ghetto, yeah, with all graffiti on the walls and that, you can see that. Yeah, but hold on, are you walking around? Because you'll be bumping into stuff, won't you? No. Why not? No, what you mean is what? that the stuff that's there in the real world is being digitally reimagined yeah. in your glasses. So what was a nice country lane is suddenly now an it's urban ghetto. It's got loads of graffiti on it. Sure. Absolutely mental, pointless, but, would never work. Absolutely yeah. one of the maddest so things you've ever weird, said. Really weird, that one. Yeah, it yeah. could be done. It, I reckon it, it could be easily Why done. Why would it be? Okay, okay, because that last one, that's number four. That's a load of bollocks. Um, so what's number five? There'll be, there'll be more letters in the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Because we're running out of words now, aren't we? No, no. we're not running out no, of words. No, we are. Now. We are definitely no. running out just of using, words. No. It's using the letters we've no. already got yeah. and yeah. making new words. Yeah, we're yeah. making, yeah. No, but we haven't got enough now. Of course we have. Have Plenty. you any idea? You could, you could have a word with nine L's yes. before you run out. Yeah, and they do in, in Wales and what have you. That's, that's because their, their alphabet <laughs> is shorter than ours. They've only got something like 24 letters over there. Right. But they go mental with the L. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, what we do is, we've got 26 letters, mm. but we are now struggling. We're, we're not struggling, struggling at we, all. We, we are. We're not. I mean, it's a stupid... Boswallocks <laughs> in shampoo. Now, there's a word where they've gone, well, we've invented something here. What? We've got something we're putting in shampoo. Boswallocks? Boswallocks. <laughs> you just made that up? No, no it's that, it's not they go, I knew, knew with Boswallocks and Ceramide are. Yeah, but that's a new word because they have to, in they come yeah, with but, a new word. But it's a, it's a terrible word. Why? Boswallocks. <laughs> it's another word! Is that real? You've missed yeah, that out, have no, you? Yeah, I have word. yeah. Now this is what I'm saying. So years ago when they came up with all the sensible ingredients, uh, go on. sodium. That sounds <laughs> that sounds all right. He likes sodium. He <laughs> doesn't like that. Because it sounds like an, an in, something in it, like an ingredient. Well, yeah, but that's because you're used to it. Is this a load of Boswell? Are you winding me up? <laughs> no, the two it's of you? real. It's, it's, it's real, and that's because 26 letters. We've wasted them. Years ago, we went mental with the, you know, pneumonia sticking a P on it. And uh, there's loads of words where you go, what's that letter doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas now, they can't do that. They've gone, whoa, pull that back. Why is that letter there? <laughs> and has? now you've got stuff like abbreviations and stuff. Yeah. Let's not waste letters. Let's just control it a little bit. Uh, things, no. Cars are called things like, you know, GTI or something. Because they're going, well, I can't think of a word to call this. So they're giving them letters. Think of a word now. Think of a word that hasn't been made up. What do you mean? Well, tell me a word that up. hasn't been made up. All words have been made up. No, one that hasn't. That could be used. Say if I invent oh. something now to put in shampoo, what can I call it? Quick. Cranberry. No, it's too close to that. No, we can't get that past the advertising person. Scrimpton. Scrimpton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like Ricky two goes and you accepted his second one. <laughs> well, I think we've uh, I think we've um, sorted out the future. Like I don't like change, and that's what's happened. I'm not you don't, do you? You're like Rain Man. Yeah. He really is like Rain Man. Uh, anything change? He's it, 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 got to get in a little routine. You can't. Uh, no, I don't like to. I'm not like Suzanne's mum and dad and what have you. Where routine cannot change no matter what. Like what? Well, we've talked about it. Where you know, if it's a Tuesday, I'm having sausage, egg, and chips, no matter where I am. <laughs> that's that's what they're like. Right. That's what, they're, that's what they'll remember. Actually, when I'm saying about stuff about. Live Eight and all that, you know, people will remember. If people said to a dad, you know, you remember Live Eight? Okay, what day was it on? Tuesday, when I had sausage and chips. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes. But the thing is today, normally we have a bit of a, you know, I know what we're doing where and all that and it's all sort of messed up. We don't usually know what we're doing where. We no. say, what should we do next? No, you but, go, what? but I know, like, Rockbusters has been done early. Right. So that's, that's normally done about... that's really that throwing it out. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. I just uh -oh. don't, uh, I don't like all this change and that, it's messing about, isn't it? Rain man. Carl, if you were president, would you sort of make compulsory to maybe have a little, little monkey? Everyone has a little monkey of their own? Little chimps out and out, old age pensioners? It's not a bad little, uh... It's funny, you know, cos there was, um, <laughs> a, s a story the other day, uh, when I was looking for monkey news. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. there's a story about a couple who, who couldn't have any kids, right? There's something wrong with them, but they really wanted a kid. And they got some, uh, dodgy email address where they could buy a baby online, oh, right? Wow. It was someone who would have a kid 
and you could buy it for three grand or something, right? Yeah. So anyway, they got one, they got picked, and they're like, brilliant, there's the money. Got the baby and everything, they were loving it. Um, you know, playing with it and stuff. As it got older... Feeding it. <laughs> it got airier. <laughs> oh, shut the f- Oh, car! Turned out they've been sold a chimp. <laughs> you, you maniac, you stupid mank twat. How Don't talk shit. That is as if. <laughs> Uh, uh, what? I didn't know it was- Oh, don't talk! <laughs> are you- are you mental? <laughs> you I love the fact that, that didn't make it into Monkey News. I know, yeah. Uh, they- well, uh, It's a bit th- sad though, we don't like to bring- They bring bought- the feature th- down. Yeah. <laughs> but, and um, how long was this into- It got hairier! They're born hairy! <laughs> no, <laughs> they're not born like humans then develop hair! Cause they go, hold on, we better ch- we better get the chimp stuff kicking in now, cause we're in the jungle! School photograph, do I like, hang on a minute. <laughs> It looks a bit weird. <laughs> oh, you are just the, mad, the, the rubbish. Mad, innit? it? Mad, innit? it? <laughs> mad, innit? it? Imagine, oh, God. But just anyway. imagine if he was in charge. We did put him in charge of the country. Just, terrifying. Wouldn't it be amazing? Let him run the country. Just for a week. Or, or the mayor. What would you do if you were the, uh, the president or the I Lord Mayor of London or the Prime Minister? Prime Minister Carl. I, I wouldn't know. do it like he's gonna be off of it. It's a hypothetical question, Carl. No, but Su- Suzanne was, uh, alright, me, me missus, if you're a new listener. You keep her, sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, help her. She was, she was watching the news trying to follow some heavy stuff. Uh. And I'm like, oh, The weather? What? You know what I, mean? <laughs> I just was like bored and I was reading about that mouse that had an ear on its back and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, so she said, well you take notice of this, she'll be, you know, you know what Ricky and Steve are like, they, you know, they try to teach you stuff and you don't even want to learn. Mm. <laughs> So to try and get me interested in it, <laughs> she was like saying, what would you do if you're president and stuff? Yeah. And I, I can't be doing with any of it. It's what did you come up with? You must what have- What would your slogan be? What, what would you- what did you come up with? Did you come up with anything? I had a little, um, the design of it, right? I yeah. said I'd, 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 I'd have like red and blue, to <laughs> sort of, do you know what I mean? Both sort of major sides into one. Yeah, yeah. Well going. that's broken the back of it, that's- that's a pretty good manifesto so far. Uh, um, anything else? What's on the second page? I had like, uh, KP looks after me. <laughs> that would be the badges, would it? Yeah. That's um, good, I'm a KP nut. Yeah. <laughs> um, KP looks after me. Yeah, brilliant. That's about as far as I went with it. <laughs> <laughs> What would you do? What about, you know, policies, transport, um, crime, uh, uh, you know, just, just law and order, um. Yeah, how would you, what would you do, how would you deal with crime? What would your initial approach be? Would you introduce guns? Should police carry guns? Nah. No. Yeah. Um, would I have to worry about that? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, no, good point. Minister. Good point. No, what um, I'm saying is that, I mean, Tony Blair isn't sorting everything out, is he? No, but he has a say in most things. Does he? <laughs> <laughs> well, go on then. What, what are the problems at the moment? I need sorting out. Well, generally, how would you? How would? What's the best way to combat? Would you? Uh, would you bolster up the prison system? Would you uh, introduce more community service? Would, would you, you, ma- would you make? Would you make? Would, would you go harsher for say? For say, um, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, drugs. Would you go harsher or or less harsh? There's there's pros and cons of both, isn't it? Because of course you ca- you can't see to condone it, but some people, you know, you don't want to go through the court system and cost taxpayers thousands of pounds of money for someone, I don't know, the difference between smoking a spliff and dealing crack. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You have to all these things, have, to, have I lost you? Yeah, I'd, I'd just think about it for a bit, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> You'd think about it for a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Probably ask Suzanne. <laughs> <what I'm> <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Get her help on it. Yeah. Can now, we what ju- about the foreign situation? Would you, uh, would you have supported Bush in his war on, against, on terrorism? Um, you were aware um, of this war that we had recently. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. I mean, if I was new, though, couldn't I just say, look, new slate, do you know what I mean? Let's start again. Yeah, right. of course you can. I'm in charge now, let's, you know, let's see if we can sort this out. What would you do then? Then see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> just leave Brilliant. It. Just leave Suck it. it and see. Brilliant. Brilliant. This, uh, yeah, this is excellent. Now, so this put- is, uh, this is not really your jurisdiction. This is not really your area, but you, I imagine you'd have some powerful friends who go might on, have a say go in on, it. Go on. Yeah. Would you, uh, what would you do about, uh, single sex marriages? Same sex marriages? See, would this you... got ca- this Cameron, I thought Cameron had blown it on Big Brother because they said, um, you know, w- what do you think about, um, uh, gay f- fellas getting married? And he went, I oh, know, in the Bible it says, you know, a man and a woman. And I thought, oh, he's put off a lot of, 
Yeah. I don't really think many Christians tune into Big Brother, but we know the guys love it. Yeah. They love Big Brother, don't they, the guys? Yeah, so interesting. But, uh, so, uh, what, yeah. was your, what would your take be on that? Same-sex marriages? Um, and then what? Having a kid? Well, just let's start off with, you well, know. that's all right, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just let them get on with it. Sure. It's not affecting anyone else. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Right? But it starts getting tricky. Right. When you get a kid. Okay. Go on, why? Well, it's, it's just tricky, innit? Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, you could be right. I'm not giving any- I mean, you know, uh, we're not- there's no right or wrong it's answer. It's alright if you were in like- if you lived in the jungle, right, with no one else, yeah. right, and you just had these two fellas, right, yeah. looking after you, but because you got no one else looking in on that saying, oh, you're a bit weird, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? But right. as soon as you come so to- So is it- what- what- why the- why have they got married? Do you think that gay people turn to a bloke because they couldn't get a woman? Um, if it, if you live if if there's two fellas go away and they're in the jungle, they go. We're definitely not going to find a woman here. We might as well bum. That's not how homosexuality starts. People don't. It makes don't, you wonder. If no, no, it doesn't make you wonder. Guys don't go. Well, I'll tell you what. I haven't seen a woman I fancy yet. I'll try a bit of knob. <laughs> no, no, no. But what I'm saying is right. If you're brought up in like a little jungle, right? Yeah. Uh, how are you brought up? Someone just puts you there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, know what, I don't I know what this is about. I can't be bothered, Steve. I can't be bothered running the country. I can't be bothered running the country! Like, I'm too much trouble for you! KP <laughs> takes care of me. Right, yeah, fair yeah, enough. What okay. I'm saying is, right, if you're brought up in a jungle, yeah. right? Right? Bro what own. do you mean brought up? Just let him finish. What does he mean brought up, though? Mean, like Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to tell me what you mean by brought up. Just Wolves! Just, chimps! What? Right, well there's a good example of what I'm saying to you. Right. Right, what I'm saying is, there's a fella, right, he's brought up in the jungle. Shut up, just let him finish. Let him finish! There's no women about, he doesn't know about women, he doesn't understand what women are. Right. Right? But another fella walks in, in the scene. Yeah. And he gets pally with him. <laughs> what does he talk about? Then they've both got needs. <laughs> this scenario! Is ridiculous. What How has he lived? <laughs> or, or do you know what's his reference I points? I can't be bothered with this. Honestly, Saturday should be, you know, day off and that, not worrying <laughs> about problems. So, uh, there we go. Carl is president. He's still, he's still confused, aren't you, Carl? Just a little bit. Just a little bit sort of amazed. Yeah. By the body. Yeah. You're just in awe the, of it, aren't you? Just the way- I'm amazed how two people can- Buy a baby on the internet for three thousand pounds and not realise it's a chimp till it goes to school. No, no, no. But seriously, what would you know? Talking about there during elbow and fallen angel, <laughs> uh, we were talking about that. I think. Yeah. If you're locked up, well, not locked up in a room. You've got a normal life except there's no women in it. Yeah. Right. But how would that happen? What would this point of reference? How would you bring right, up hang a on person? Minute, can I just ask and you totally go on. How can infinite monkeys and a typewriter? Right, again, I've told you before, right, that is not- you don't actually have to test that model. It's- it's, um, basically a model for the- th that explains the nature of infinity. Okay? Yeah, but... I've told you before, it- mm. it works because of the definition of infinity. There's no- there's nowhere in the world you'll ever be able to get an infinite amount of monkeys and typewriters to com- But anyway, all I'm saying yeah. is, I think if- if you don't know about women, would you crave for a woman, even well, though you, you don't you, know her you, around? You, when you hit sort of puberty, your hormones will kick in and you'd, you'd start getting urges. But for what? If you don't know about it? You don't have to know about it. You don't, when, if you grew up and you started feeling hunger, you wouldn't go and wonder what that is. You'd go, get me a sandwich, I'm starving. It's different though, it's different. But I'm not- um, but- but we're oh, not saying weird. it's- uh, it's all hardwired or people are- ch can't change their- their natural state. We do it all the time. We fight nature all the time with conditioning. That is weird, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, right, well that's I, that I, one. I'll tick that. Was... It's weird, isn't it? No, I'll the body is. There was something- yeah. did, you, did you read that thing the other week about, um- Man with two penises? <laughs> no, 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 we don't need that. We don't need uh, that. lawyer who got in office realised he was actually an orangutan <laughs> and they just shaved him and put a suit on him from Hugo Boss. And the funny thing is, he won the case and the judge said, well, <laughs> don't send him back to d d jungle, let him set off on his own. Bodge it, wibble and podge. You'd make the best judge in the world. No, there's a fella. Here's a banana. 
we get on to, uh, I said, well, things are, uh, I said, uh, um, uh, we can see the speed of evolution in, um, in lower life forms like bacteria, viruses, they evolved, and that's why um, uh, soon we won't have an antibiotic um, that can kill some certain bacterial strains. And he said, and this is about um, half eleven, and I said, I'm going to bed, right? He said, in the future, they reckon that we'll be able to wake up and eat a yogurt you can have a chat with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Right, let's put a song on, right? No, and we'll oh, come back to so it. So you're going to explain that? Yeah. You've got an explanation. Yeah. He again. said, they reckon, and he, he, he uh, I said, I'm going to bed. He went, no, really, I said, no, I'm going to bed, Carl. There's no point now, because, I mean, it's, it's just like you're talking gobbledygook. You know what I mean? I might as well talk to a pot plant. <laughs> yeah. He said, in the future, they reckon, I don't know who they are. <laughs> sure. I don't know, people who post things on the internet that he well, reads. Uh, I think the Telegraph. Anyway, can, can complete the sentence. They reckon that in the future you'll be able to wake up. I love you. There's always a little scenario, an embellishment, yeah. like this little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, darling. It's your yogurt. Hello. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to wake up and eat a yogurt you can have a chat with. All right. Well, that, you know, thanks for that, Rick. I'm looking at you. I'm going to throw that over to Carl. <laughs> right. It's when I was away on holiday, right? I got. Uh, I don't normally buy the Telegraph because it's too big and that, isn't it? So, but, uh, they were giving it away for free on the plane, so I thought... Ding dong. Might yeah. as well have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I saw a couple of things in it, and I thought that would be interesting. I saw this thing about the future, and it was talking about evolution and what have you, right, which I always find weird, because I always think that maybe we've sort of done it wrong anyway. Do you know what I mean? I sometimes think... You can't, you can't, evo it, 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 by definition, evolution can't get things wrong. Mm. Things change that it's not successful, it can't pass on its, uh, genetic material or that, uh, but... If if you're around, you're, it's working. If you're around, it's working. Slugs are as evolved as they need to be. Slugs are as evolved as you. And well, me. that's true enough. No, yeah, yeah. No disrespect, but it works. It so, works. Sorry, but anyway, what's your point, Carl? No, I mean, I think we probably would have been better off staying as a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Just because there's, cause there's more water than land, isn't they? Right. And you wouldn't drown. This is why I went to bed. No, I can imagine. I'm thinking of dozing off now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it went. It, do you know what I mean? From well, what was it? it was bacteria. It was yeah. fish, mermaid, man. <laughs> onwards, <laughs> and what have you. So anyway. <laughs> oh so God! Was, oh. oh God! No, there there are a few knowledge gaps in your theory of evolution. <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, you generally got it right, though. So but yeah, but yeah. I mean, basically, yeah. It, it went. It went. Bacteria, fish, mermaid, man. <laughs> um, so what, I, what next is the big question? <laughs> So, oh. so it was telling you all about this, and what have you been saying now, like, uh, we shouldn't have interfered, cos maybe if we wouldn't have invented planes and what have you, maybe we'd be able to fly and what have you, sure. if we really yeah. needed to and stuff yeah, like that. Okay. So, we, so we've interfered with, with mm. evolution, you see. Right. But then it was saying, well, what's the future got? Well, we, well, yes, in one way we have interfered with evolution, yeah. The, ev uh, the evolution of the human being in society is changing. It's not, it's no longer based on the strongest or the fittest because medical science can keep us alive long enough. Um, people can uh, uh, pass on their genetic material where without this civilization they wouldn't have been able to. So, yeah, um, it's di it, 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 there are different parameters, there are different pressures, there are different things that say whether we're going to pass on our genetic material or not. Okay. So in that sense, you're right. And and that, Rick, as far as I'm aware, has led to a yogurt that you can eat and have a conversation with. So, <laughs> this, this is what it was saying. It was just saying, you know, we're living in mad times and that. You sure. know, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. One of and, which uh, is. Go on. And, and the fellow was just saying, uh, you know, with computers and stuff like that, the way it is, uh, we'll be able to wake up. Go on. Have a chat with your yogurt and have something to eat. What do you mean, have a chat with your yogurt? Because of the amount of. I mean, you have them yogurts already, those friendly yogurts. Those bacteria-friendly ones. So this is just a, a really friendly one. Yeah, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I'm my best. Do you know what? Sometimes, Carl, I think that we're having a chat with the yogurt. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> there can't be any difference. Uh, uh, yeah, but then I'm always reminded that would be more entertaining. <laughs> that would be more informative. You know, I mean, maybe I'd murder a person. You know, wow. just say, you know, I don't know, but man, I think I'd probably go mental. Because that's Because I've always been a very reserved person, you know, I've always, I've never got into a fight, I've never caused a rumpus. Yeah, but that's a worrying thought because, um, we, we don't have to have the end of the world for it to be the end of your world, because a lot of people know that they're terminally ill, so mm. they don't go around smashing up bars and killing people. But I suppose I know there'll be no repercussions ultimately because they're gonna the next die anyway. day everyone's gone, yeah, so there's so not going to be mourning families. But, but then, uh, but then how dare you deprive that person of his last eight hours or ten hours of life? 
Um, I don't care because it's the last day on earth. Well, that's so I true. Know, well, I know the moral guilt that I'll feel is over in, in a few hours. Morality isn't relative just to repercussion, is it? Because no, but you the can, point you is, can you do you things without repercussion. But often people say, you know, what would you do if you never got caught, or would you do it if you know, I, I, there is repercussions for that person, as grave as they might be, just because you feel that it's no big deal either way, that they're only going to live another eight hours, they might feel differently. And you're saying, well, you won't care because you won't be around. But then why do people care about their loved ones when they won't be around? Why do people get a will ready? Because my point is that they know that those people will continue to live for an in indeterminate amount so of time. So you do care about the p other person's Of course I then. do. Oh, no, of course I do. But my point is, knowing that everyone is going to be wiped off the face of the earth the following day, all of those, re all those repercussions are no longer quite the same. Um, I'd find it hard to divorce myself from my morality that's ingrained just because it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I honestly, to me, it seems that we're, we're approaching uh, just the end, the end of all things. And so I'm saying that there's something about the fact that we're all going to end that somehow seems very liberating. What would you do? I've always wanted to kick a duck up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> One prediction for the future, Carl, is from uh, an academic study, what, what the world would be like in about 75 years from mm -hmm. now. And uh, a big prediction they're sort of sure of is that androgyny will rule. There'll be so little difference between men and women, apart from the biology, economically, socially. It won't matter who the biggest breadwinner is. That's already being phased out. If you're in a traditional heterosexual male-female couple, it'll be who stays home, who earns the most or whatever. It won't be governed... By, by gender, um, and that's getting less and less anyway, as it is now. But soon you won't even need a female or a man in your life. You'll just need the egg or sperm, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll be able to have any coupling you want or or not. Thoughts, Carl? That uh, that isn't what I've heard. What were you heard? I well, heard that. So you got you you read a, an academic study, Rick. But yeah. well, let's find out what Carl's well, been reading. I heard we're uh, you know we're all going to go old boy. <laughs> Different point, though, isn't it? That's a, a different, different point. point though. Not listening to a word uh, Ricky said. No, it's on. just it's just uh, if we all sort of go ugly, uh, that will sort the population. He gets an out. extra syllable in the word ugly. Mm. Ugly, <coughs> ugly, ugly. Yeah. So that down just sorts the population out because people aren't sort of having it away. Left, well, right, and centre. Well, no, well then that, that doesn't sort. Of, what do you mean? Sorry, Rick, I don't understand what the hell he said there. Is he, are you so saying? Many... Are you saying because everyone's ugly, everyone won't want to have it away more with the ugly person? Yeah. Okay, I still don't. You seem to understand what he's talking about, Rick. I'm still confused. But what, what, he, what he thinks is that if we all, if we're all ugly, then we still have this strange paradigm of beauty that won't exist, so we won't fancy anyone as no, much. No, no, they'll still sort of fancy because at the end of the day, we're animals, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll still have it away, but yeah. not as much as they'd like to do now because it's all based on looks. Sorry, so, but what's this got to do what's with what What's this Ricky world said? like? Describe, because describe a typical town or, or country It's sentiment. exactly right. Imagine London, you've still got the gherkin, you've still got the big wheel. That's right. it, it's just everyone's ugly. Right, and they're, and they're doing all the same jobs, are they? they Everyone's just... still, yeah, the so world's what, got to carry what on. What do they look like? What's ugly? Just imagine, like, yeah. haven't you ever seen anyone when you've just gone, look at that. Yeah. Right, well, like, like that. Yeah, but hold on. It's ugly by today's standards, is it? So I throw forward to 75 years, you'll go, oh, everyone's what we call ugly, but what's happened to society? What do they think of everyone? They won't suddenly go in, oh, and it annoying, we've got, we've got uglier. Because it's not no, like because a strict... we have got better looking, haven't we? If I look back now yeah. at a school photo, yeah. you look at my class and you go, what, what was going on then? Wouldn't you <laughs> tell the difference between <laughs> some all... of the girls and the blokes? No, but that's not true. Because it is, honestly. You that's look at fashion it and, and nutrition. Some... And I see that, yeah, yeah, when I see an old episode of Bullseye, I think, Jesus, the men look like right. rakes with right. no teeth and a moustache, yeah. and, they're, and they're, they're bald with their hair down like a paedophile, and he goes, now how old are you? And I'm like, 52, 52, he goes, I'm 22. He goes, what? Yeah, but that's more because of the sort of people that used to go on Bullseye. I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> Paul, exactly. Paul Newman was never going to pop on Bullseye. <laughs> no, exactly. 
exactly. You know, because he was and actually then, a plumber from, you know, yeah. Essex. And then think of the people that he grew up with, well, where he, I mean, some of them live in holes now. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think you're, the, the class of um, Pilkey, 1982, doesn't really count. When he said, we've got better looking, I thought he was going to talk about cavemen. <laughs> Not yeah, his score no. photo. I mean, what happened there? there? There's been no evolution in that time. What are you talking about, Carl? We've got better looking now, haven't we? I wonder if he's confused it with the like, the paradigms of, of beauty have changed, haven't they? So in the 50s, Marilyn Monroe was, was considered, you know, a very desirable, whereas that body shape on women, yeah, more recently, has become, has become less, you know, it's yeah. lots of skinny women are seen as a paradigm of beauty. But, so that has maybe changed. But we will change. Yeah, we'll Probably change. Probably not in years. I mentioned before about, uh, your little finger. There'll come a time when that'll go. I've said, I've watched it. I've kept an eye on what my little finger's doing. <laughs> Sometimes it does nothing. <laughs> it never helps out. All the others are grabbing all the stuff. That one just sort of sits there watching. So you could get rid of that, and I think that that will go in evolution. <laughs> think of the books he could have read when he was doing that, when he was monitoring his little <laughs> finger. I've, I've been watching my little finger. But again, it's what you mean. Look, 75 years is nothing. The only thing that changes uh, in 75 years is trend, fashion, economics. The gene pool doesn't change unless there's been some sort of really weird mutation due to an external force. That I, I don't know. For things of science fiction where we all accidentally drank plutonium and got three eyes and one leg. It doesn't happen that fast. I've told you before, if you shaved a caveman, he's basically us. He's basically us. Well, he's basically Carl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's the just... little finger will be, let me tell you, millions of years. Um... I think what's more interesting about the future, Carl, is the fact that technology integrated with humans will be fascinating. So, for instance, they're talking you know, about the fact that in the future we may even be able to have chips in our head that allow us to access the internet or an equivalent of it directly, mentally. Not, not, so not, imagine not, that. To say, not, not French fries. But hang that. on, though. Well, at what point are we us, then? They are. This is good. Go on, go on, go on. No, because if I, if I can go on the internet at any time, then that's going to know more than me. What does that mean? Okay. When I don't know an answer to something now, mm. which is a lot of stuff. Really? Go on. You yeah. watch University Challenge yeah. and the stuff them, them kids on that now. I just think, where have they stored that? Where's that gone in their head? Mm. How have they left that somewhere and it's just sat there waiting to be used? For me, if something doesn't get used within a time period, that's it. But again, it's forgotten again, about. okay, that's application and, and, and training and all that. I don't but, think, I think that... But basically, mm. you're, you, you've got about the same hardware I haven't, as those people. Honest to God, I haven't. I know I haven't. Your, your brain capacity is It's not huge. the same as theirs. It's not the same. Well, you might not be what's considered as academically intelligence then, but again, uh, an awful lot of it is, you know, nurture more than nature. Um, your brain's good. Your brain is up there. Don't worry about that. Well, it isn't. But listen, so what I'm saying is, if I want to know the answer to something, I go on the internet. Yeah, right. Now, if I've got a chip in my head with Google on it, yeah. I'm never going to use my head. I'll just be forever on Google. <laughs> Use my head. Well, I'm not but because what do you what's think the your point? Head is, though? Because well, I'm going to get it wrong. The chances are I'll get it wrong. So divert that. It's like saying no, no. You can't bypass the brain straight to Google. When so you're having a chat socially, it's not like they're going, "All right, Carl, how are you?" And um, you're not there. You're asleep, and Google's talking. Oh, I think you'll find that they no, no only. Do you want to see naked ladies? No, <laughs> no, only for questions though that I don't know. But what I'm saying is because I don't know a lot of the answers. Mm. I'll just say, forget it, leave it connected to Google. So, no, no. so then I'm well, not me anymore. Well, what are you doing? Where's you gone? I'm looking at Google. <laughs> so it is you. No, but what Steve just said is, we'll have a chip in our head. Right. That can access the internet. Yeah. Mm. So what, why bother using But you're the still knowledge? the go-between. You're, you, Carl, are the go-between between the internet and whatever your but mouth says. you can't says. beat the internet. Yes, the car knows everything. No, you're accessing the information like it was part of your brain capacity, but you're still processing and using that information. But, but, but hold on, where does Google get the information from in the first place? Someone, on, one of them bright people on a University human, Challenge just put being. it on. Yeah, yeah, a human being. So, but I'm going to get lazier. I don't watch the University Challenge and go, I want to be like them, I'm going to start reading books. I've accepted, I, I'm never going to be like them. I can't play along. All I tend to do is, 
he's, he's, I, I say to Suzanne, right, so every question now, I'm going to have egg as the answer. <laughs> and I'm hoping that one day... <laughs> <laughs> what an amazing because intellectual oh, pursuit that is. What a lucky lady. <laughs> what a Suzanne to that. Well, she just sees if it works. She just plays along and then I'm saying, oh, it might be this one or whatever. I remember, the... I love that because I remember once, it was about um, five years ago, uh, Carl and Suzanne were around near Christmas and me and Jane were there. We were playing different parlour games um, like charades and that. And then one game, you have to do that thing where you have to beat and you have to do animals and you have to go... Uh, first one is A, then B. So you say aardvark. Next one goes beaver. Next one goes cat. It came to Carl. He panicked and he went egg. <laughs> 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 and he was on egg. <laughs> So, so you're sat there watching University Challenge, and on a good night, it's, you know, well-known jeweller of Fabergé is well-known for his jewel-encrusted war <laughs> egg. Yeah, uh, yeah. Humpty Dumpty is commonly pictured as a living egg. <laughs> That's sometimes right. really what I'm saying. Story. Oh. Is, you keep saying the same thing, eventually... It's yeah. like a broken watch. Carl puts his right, head looks like hay. <laughs> yeah. I've just got more chance of getting it right. Sure. But um, also, he told me uh, w when he plays University Challenge, um, uh, he said he's given up ever trying to get an answer. So now he tries to guess who's going to answer the question. <laughs> 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 Another great game. <laughs> Suzanne's roped it on. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> how would you do with that? That's not... I'm normally all right on that. <laughs> I'm normally all right on there's that. There's got to be something else. There's, there's, another, there's, another, there's, another, there's another evolution thing, though. When you watch brainy people on that, or wearing glasses. Yeah. Mm. What does that tell you? We are reading too much. We're wearing well, the eyes out. Mm, and that, you, you can't argue with that. Because the evidence well, is there. Can. Most people on University Challenge, which is a quiz show if people don't have that in the country... The, the, it's the brainiest quiz of all time, isn't it? To be honest, I don't know why they don't go on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or something. Because they'll get a better prize than... A, I don't, what do they win on University Challenge? Because they'll be stitched up by a question of, uh, who's in Ollie Oaks? It will be the... <laughs> yeah. But that's the snobbery I, it'll be, as well. It'll be what character does Andy Lincoln play in this life? And they won't get it and you'll go, egg, and you'll be correct. <laughs> but, but that's, uh... That's the thing, isn't it? This snobbery on, like, braininess. The way that if you're if you're a specialist mm. in uh, I don't know what something well no don't help him go on finish just you've started a conversation you're halfway through a sentence you've got a point you to can't make. bail out now okay say if you're a specialist in uh, go on Latin tattoos. <laughs> Latin uh, tattoos! I don't know what, that is. what Latin tattoos? I didn't know you wanted something so specific. So that's a tattoo you have on your arm with cogito or some underneath, or is it is it a Just tattoo? Any sort of, well, it's the only reason Latin's still alive, isn't it? Right, right. Tattooists. So <laughs> you go on, you go on Mastermind. Yeah. And people will go, oh, he's clever, isn't he? Mm. You got uh, you got forty correct in sixty seconds. Yeah. Now, if you go on and say <laughs> any questions. <laughs> about Coronation Street between 1990 and 1992, people go, oh, he's a bit of a knob. Because yeah. there's a snobbery to yeah. education. Yes. Yes, there is. But a question is still a question, isn't it? Well, it, to a certain degree, although, yeah, yeah that's fine. Um, but there's but, no application to knowing who played Ina Sharples, whereas, presumably, there is something useful in, um, well, not perhaps Latin tattoos because no, we none of us understand no, exactly what no. that is. But uh, if you're a, if you're a knowledge you have knowledge of you know uh, astrophysics, obviously that's going to be you know as Ricky says, it's going to take more application to become an expert on that than watching Coronation Street twice a week. But it's still information that you've had to learn. You've not learned it, have you? You've just no. sat down in front of the telly and it's just piped into your brain very directly and very easily and enjoyably. Let's say the people working on that microchip that one day you'll have in your brain, mm. are they not doing something more interesting and valuable for society than uh, than the Coronation Street fella? Um, no, because Coronation Street is he, that fella who knows a lot about it. He's at least he's enjoying his his time watching that. Oh, well, I'm saying he's not enjoying it. So he's enjoying it, but you know, a brain in a jar can be enjoying it if it doesn't know it's a brain in a jar. Right. So what are you what are you asking me? But we were talking... <laughs> <laughs> Didn't seem a difficult point, what we were saying. We what were I saying, mean is... OK, one more go. What right. do you mean? The chip in the brain... Mm. ...isn't part of filling your head with stuff 
the journey of filling it with that stuff. <laughs> 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 what do you mean? Whereas if I just, if I'm, say if you had a baby, the baby pops out, it cries a bit, they go, right, we've got, what do you want your baby to be interested in? And you say, I, I want it to be uh, a plumber. You go, right, <laughs> when it's two, we're going to stick a plumber chip in its head. Right, yeah. It's not right, is it? No. No. I don't know why you chose plumber, either. <laughs> well, we still need... Plumbing, yeah, I know we do, but the, it's okay. odd that they would have chosen for they got such, <laughs> oh, yeah, such kind of small it's what, it's, it's what ambitions for it's their what babies. his granddad did, and he, he you know, he, they want the sort of the thing to go through the business. They own yeah. a plumbing business. <laughs> they want they want the baby to carry on the business. The they, want, they want the baby to be able to plumb. It goes on now where <laughs> where parents force the kids into riding horses, and you mm. see the kid without the parents about, and you go, "Do you like horses?" And they go, no, "Not really." Being forced to get an horse, yeah. can't stand them. And people would go, that's wrong. The mm. kid should have the freedom to decide if he wants to get on horse or not. That's right, yeah. Well, what about this chip in the head? But you've made this but up. you've made the scenario <laughs> they're, they're not putting chips in babies' heads. I thought you said they were. No. What, well, why did I say that? that? No, no, no. said that. I, I think Steve's right, and I don't know, I haven't read it, but I imagine he's saying it's the next step in convenience with technology and, and, and an interface between the human and uh, a research tool or fun. You know, computers went from being the size of a room to a thing you can wear on your watch. So the next step may be, oh, you, you won't forget your palm top, you won't forget your iPod, you won't forget your laptop. It's, it's in there, it's an interface. I know, but it makes us lazy. But but you you straight away thought that now that that, that it went to some sort of weird um, uh, laboratory where it's all white and there's just a, a doctor uh, and he's everyone's in a silver suit right and they go we're removing your you the self we're removing the self and putting in chip you are now computer boy <laughs> yeah it's but not watch Coronation Street well you won't in a few seconds but. I hate Coronation Street, me. Carl, it's not a question of it's not that it's not that Google is now Carl. It kind of looks like it looks like Carl, but it's just spamming, you know, little pop-ups about offers you can buy and all the cheap holidays here and there. He's not the man I'm at it. Right, look at it like this. Jesus, look, I see it all the time now. Go on. You go. Ooh. Where are you going to someone? And they go, I'm going to uh, Dorset. Aye. Oh, aye. Right. What road are you taking? Don't know. I'll just pop on the sat nav. Now, mm. that's a start, isn't it? Okay. Let's act that out with me, okay? Um, I'm going away for the weekend, Carl. Are you? Yeah. Where are you going? Dorset. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you getting there? Uh, car. Oh, right, yeah. Well, which, uh, which way are you going? Um, don't know. Why, why do you want to know? Oh, well, just, just making a, just making a friendly chat. Just, you know, I'm, I'm interested in geography. Which way are you going? Well, I don't know, really. I've got a sat-nav in my car, and Ooh. I'm getting there, and... What do you mean? What, 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 what? Lazy, isn't it? Well, I don't... I'm not a, I'm not a pigeon. I don't... Have well, you got an A to Z? Well, well yeah, but it's... Yeah, it's a, on a computer with the A to Z. What's the difference between looking at an A to Z and... It's a bit, and la it's a bit lazy, though. Not it? really, no. No. Why? Why is it any different that I've got it computer eyes so I can go along? A to Z is a bit dangerous, isn't it? It's a bit... Don't go to A to Z when you're driving along. Clive, who are you talking to? Because we need to hit the road, we need to get going. What is this, uh, uh, this fucking idiot who wants to know what road I'm sorry. taking, which is a fucking boring thing who? to ask. Anyway. Sorry, who is this twat? Because Fuck we really me. got he's to get going. He's a fucking dickhead who, 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 I think he's an A to Z salesman by the door. I mean, he's well, just, we're just telling him we're using the sound now because it's the quickest, most, most efficient way of doing it. It's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. No, but, but look, look, but what's who happened? Who the fuck are you? Would Columbus found America? If he'd had a sat nav. Yes! No, he wouldn't. He'd have put in America and he would have taken it he to wouldn't. He wouldn't. America. He only found it because he got lost. Now, if everybody d just but goes... Hold on, hold on. How would he, an undiscovered country, <laughs> be on a sat nav? No. Go on. But I, I just What's mean... What's the difference between the sat nav and the map in that regard? Because I've found some lovely little cafes on roads I've never been on. <laughs> Gone from finding oh, a continent to a little I love that. I love that. <laughs> little greasy I'm, I am off to discover the unknown world. Where are you going? Well, I don't know yet. It's the unknown world. <laughs> what are you taking? Just a uh, boat like all lazy swim, you can't. <laughs> I love the fact that he's so Luddite now, he's annoyed at the sat-nav. I mean, you'd have probably given Columbus a hard time. Oh, got a compass. Don't you know where North <laughs> is, you twat? I just think there's something in being lost. I never feel lost. I just think, oh, I've had a diversion. 
<laughs> because you find you find new things. I'm forever well, going down. Suzanne's asking the French peasant where well, the. Uh, I just think you know Columbus. All right, what's the most interesting thing you found when when lost? Uh, like I say, they normally I, I found a shop that was like a fancy dress shop. Amazing. Do you need fancy dress stuff? Dressed you never up as Columbus. Went and bought a sat nav. <laughs> went to Dorset for the weekend. <laughs> you never go out. Why do you need a fancy dress shop? That sounds like the one thing you would hate. Is fancy just, dress. No, but I like looking at the. Uh, they have like a space helmet in there. Right. So you found a fancy <laughs> dress shop. Where are you supposed to be going? That you got. You had time to get sidetracked and go in a. I think I was going to a meeting. <laughs> Just Amazing! That's the last time. You want to get lost? Yeah, you, you don't want to get lost, no, do you? Because I always give myself loads of time because I get lost a lot. I always give myself. Get, get a nerve. No, I'm. I'm just saying. You, that's that's how you find little treats along the way. And you, <laughs> next time you pass it, or next time someone says, "Do you know where the fancy dress shop is?" You can go, "Yeah, I do." You go, I have no idea because I was lost. No, I didn't no, know where no, it was. No, 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 no. Normally, oh, I well, I'm not going to tell you. Lazy cunt. Have you got an A Z? Oh, that's harsh. Yeah, find it yourself. You lazy mm. mad. Mm. Or I might get lost. Good. You might find another one. I'm ju I, it just goes back to the, the chip thing in the head. I think you, you've got to learn along the way. We can't get lazy. We can't have chips in the head knowing how to plumb. That's what it's all about, isn't it? And, and making mistakes. If you make a mistake, I, I've done some wiring, got a little shock. Won't happen again. It will. <laughs> I've seen that experiment with you before. <laughs> We've all, we all changed. Carl used to have air. Yeah, but he had, you, by your own admission, I had it for long. You, you, you didn't have it hair for long, did you? you no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Didn't want to hang around my hair. It was never. I've told you, it, it didn't feel needed, so it went. I never did anything with it. It was hair of a Chinaman, wasn't it? Even the hairdresser said, "He said yeah. you can do nothing with this." <laughs> so what do you mean? He said it's just too. It's sort of limsy. Limsy. <laughs> Sorry, was that that that's a limp or flimsy? I reckon. Uh, well, no, that yeah. lim limsy is uh, is a Chinaman um, that, that, that um, gave his name yeah. to the, uh, the li limp hair uh, of the of the Chinese. So place. you think your hair bailed on you because it was not getting treated well enough? I think that's I think that's true. I think that's right. how it works. But yeah, I know what you mean. You sort of I sort of think about if I've changed and that, but I don't think I have that much. Mm. I still have the same sort of thoughts. Um, I like olives now, <laughs> which I didn't okay. like probably three years ago. Right. Mm. Wow. Um, but you can, if you eat four in a row, you get a taste for them. And I thought, go on, they'll have five. <laughs> and I, I thought, yeah, they're all right these. <laughs> so that's different. But other than that, I mean, these. So what, you, what were your dreams and ambitions when you were young? Yeah, how many? Right. It was kind of uh, five years old. What do you want to be? What was uh, the thoughts of the future? I didn't. I didn't worry. At five years old, you're not worrying about okay. work and that. Ten. What, what's your what's your hopes and fears of all these years I met in thee tonight? I wasn't worrying about work till about till about thirteen, fourteen. Just thinking, right, you know, people who were new had left school, they weren't getting work. And I was thinking, oh, I don't want to be like that. Um, that's when I did boxing. You know, that I could have gone down that route. Mm. Got into boxing, didn't I? Mm. Uh, How many fights do you have? I don't know, about three or four. Yeah. Uh, How long is it? Just when does brain camp damage kick in? I guess it can. St I mean, I guess it can happen almost instantly. I mean, it must that must be must have been part of it. Were you were you really? Did you really get a bad beating on one of those fights? Yeah, Leroy gave us a right good clackering. Mm. Uh, clackering. Yeah, the thing is, your jab was a bit limsy, but Leroy's was clackering. <laughs> uh, then there was the dancing. I don't remember mm. this. What, what break dancing? Well, I did that. I did a bit of body popping. Yeah. But did you ever th really think that you might do this in the future? You did never know, do you? But did you at the time? Do you remember thinking, "Oh, I could, I wouldn't mind doing well, this"? Well, I must have, I must have, must have thought that for me to go. Well, let's let's try and join, you know, Twiggy's dance club and all that. And uh, my mum and dad always sort of, you know, if you want to give it a go, give it a go with the boxing. Uh, you know, me my dad was saying, "Right, I'll get you the proper shoes and that." And my mum's like, "Don't don't bother getting in them yet." Let's see if he sticks at it for like four months because they were about thirty quid for Let the shoes. Let him carry on in my furry slippers. Uh, then with the dancing, <laughs> it was the same thing. I said, "Oh, I need some leg warmers and that." And uh, these tights are just as good. Come on, <laughs> no, my my dad, on your hands tights. My dad gave me um, like his. Uh, he cut like the, the sleeves off a shirt. Amazing. <laughs> and that were your leg warmers. Yeah. Amazing. But uh, it's funny when you're a kid, it don't bother you. But surely cut him off a jumper. No, yeah. I, I don't know why. I know it looked after. I had cuffs on leg warmers. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's amazing. But when you're That's a kid, amazing. what did they you think they It He's... must have looked Lance Owen and Bowen doing a handstand. <laughs> <laughs> 
But then, you know, that didn't last long, and then my dad, you know, it, I was getting older now, and he's like... Dad needed his shirt back for a wedding. <laughs> yeah, as long as he didn't take his jacket off, it was fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> dad, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my hat, I need a hat. Dad, I don't need a bloody hat. Put my pants on, Fed. <laughs> But then you've got to make sure you, you try and get a job and school was sort of saying... So 15 now. Hang on, why did Twiggies, why did you stop going down Twiggies? Well, it was shut, wasn't it? Amazing. Oh, it closed down? It closed down, it had a load of toilet rolls in there. It had been turned into like a storage unit. I've never really had a, had like a dream, I've just bumbled along. Mm. Because it, it, like I've said, it's bumbled. that, it's that thing of Clackered, sort of... Bumbled, um, limsy. It's like, call my fucking bluff. <laughs> there's no point sort of wishing for too much, because if you don't get it, you'll be fed up. So it's better just to sort of go, well, let's see what's around the corner. This is what I've said to you about a sat-nav system. Right. It? It's the same thing. Mm. Yeah, sure, I have the sat-nav. Type in where you want to go, and it'll take you straight there. Mm. But what I say is, use the back streets. Mm. Have a look around. Turn off. Don't go straight ahead. Turn right. Mm. The little dead ends. Yeah. Have a look. Well, you might get mugged. Have a look. Don't go down the dead ends. Why not? You've got a reverse back There's nothing there. Dead end. No, but have a look. Well, there's nothing there. It's dead end. Well, what's the road doing there then? Well, it's a dead end. It's yeah, but there must ends. be something down there. There's nothing. It's, dead. it's just ends. It's just a wall. Right, so it's not a problem. Reverse. Do, 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 well, don't go down in the first place if you know it's a dead end. Don't tell people to go down a dead end. They've got to reverse out. Difficult. Well, I'd say just have a look. You see, that's the difference between me and you. I'd right. have a look down the dead it's end. It's dead end. Don't worry. It's what's dead down end. there? Just dead nothing, mate. Dead end. R rubbish? Just yeah, no, rubbish. nothing. Dead nothing end. at all. Yeah, no, put ground down there. Dead end. Right, so I'll go, well, I'll just have a look for myself, because I don't believe you. Okay, well, go on then. Right, I'll have a look. Yeah. Oh, look at this I've found. What have you found? Just a box of money that you didn't know about. <laughs> All I'm saying is it could be He anything. has still got the brain of a ten-year-old, <laughs> hasn't he? Money. He's still got the brain of a ten-year-old. Uh, I'm just, uh, set your stall out. Right. So where's the store? Where are you sitting the store? Not in the dead <laughs> yeah, end. Because there's, there's no free there's traffic. There's no thoroughfare, yeah. You want, you want to be on this a sort of public highway. Where are you setting your stall out? What are you selling? What are you selling? Well, this is what I'm saying to you. What are you selling I'm first? selling a mixture of stuff. What? Like what? O all sorts. What have you bought it with? A bag of money you found in the dead end? Leg warmers. So you got you got le new leg warmers with, um, do you want, have you, do you want cufflinks with them? <laughs> what? Do you want cufflinks with them leg warmers? <laughs> well, now, why would I do that? Well, you got to fucking look smart, ain't you, you cunt? <laughs> <laughs> so you're selling, uh, what are you selling? You... So, oh, you, yeah. se you set your stall out. Yeah, right. Now, yes. isn't it dangerous to sell oh. all the same product in that shop? Right. Okay, where's the analogy going? This yeah. is a metaphor. I think it's a metaphor. Yeah. Um, or similes. Or similes. Yeah, what, 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 what are you selling? What are you selling first? No, Bang. Two, three, four. No, but Quick, this is, is what I'm saying to you. This is what I'm saying to you, though. I right. just said to you. Yeah. You. Yeah. Well, I don't know what you wanted to do. You haven't told me. But right. I'm saying. Do you want me to tell you what I wanted to be when I wanted to be well, at five years old? I wanted to own a sweet shop until my mum said, you know, you got to buy the sweets first. Right, from ten, I wanted to be like a scientist. Fifteen, a vet kicked in. But Carry at some on. point, you jettisoned all of that to try and pursue a pop career. Twenty, I wanted to be a pop star. Twenty-five, I thought I'd better get a job. <laughs> well, at thirty, I did. Me saying turn off the main road and do a right. Yes. Is saying just have a look around in the same way that if you go into a shop. It was a metaphor, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. It was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the same way that if you go into a shop, mm. you're thinking I'm getting a uh, quarter of bomb bombs. Right, bum bombs, <laughs> bum bombs. Well, by okay. the time you get to the counter, you're clackered, and you get some licorice all sorts instead because you yeah. thought, actually, I forgot about them. Sorry, now this isn't a metaphor, is it? This is this is a real shop now, isn't it? I just, uh, I just mean you're gonna be, you're gonna be let down. You're gonna be very very disappointed with life mm. if um, you know. Well, what? Be what? Well, if what? If what? If if what? If if what? The thing you're aiming for yeah. doesn't happen. But what if it does happen? I'd like to take issue with this, because there's a lot of young people who listen to our podcasts, and if they listen to you, this tripe, that if you try for something in life, it won't happen, so don't bother, I think it's a bloody disgrace. No. Imagine if Leona Lewis had thought that when she went on the bloody X Factor. She wouldn't have got punched by that bloke in that... <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't make sense. But you know what I mean, she would not be living her dreams. Yeah, but we don't know what Leona wanted to do. She might she have had a backup plan. That's why she's done it. She might have had a backup plan. Yeah, but she fulfilled the main ambition, which was to sing. That's why she went on the show. She didn't go in there because she thought, I might want to work down a branch of Waterstones. You think she went in there and said, uh, quarter bomb bombs. She's like, oh, this is uh, X Factor. But she went, oh, go on then. <laughs> well, I was saying. Well, what about the, 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 the girl who looked like a fat baby? She went on there with a dream. 
It's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, yeah! But nah. the point is, I'm not saying you all have to go on the X Factor if you're a hopeless idiot. I'm saying if you've got a little bit of talent and you pursue it, it might take you somewhere. If you want to be a vet or a doctor or pop star, you might have a chance. You may as yeah. well have a stab for it than say, oh, it's all right, I'll just sit around in my underpants. Yeah, they're doing a new one, the X-Ray Factor, where you can actually, you know, become a uh, top radiologist. <laughs> <laughs> but I've said this for, for an idea. I think that's, they should do that. Because how many singers do we need in the world? You see, that's the thing. We're talking yeah. about the future. Yeah. I, I think it, we're not going to talk anymore. I think we're, we're all... We're, it's going to be like living in an opera. The way yeah. things are going on now, everyone wants to sing. Yeah. Whereas, if you did a TV programme to try and get a doctor... You know, get, factor. you know, yeah. it's all about you know getting in young kids, do live surgery. You know, there's big queues anyway. People are queuing up to have operations done. Yeah. So you say, look, Ilda, you have got a problem with your with your left bun bunion. You can either wait for your proper doctor and hospital, but it's going to be a, a two year waiting list. Or you can or have Jedward do it. Are you <laughs> free Saturday night live? Because <laughs> we've got two 17 year olds who are going to do it. Hilda, she comes out. They, they saw... <laughs> little voice. I've never heard him do a little voice before. So I'm going, wait, I'm Okay, okay. So this is, okay, what is this? This is a talent show where people can have a go at being a doctor. doctor yeah. right? Well, this they is need... like something from the Middle Ages. <laughs> but they need, but they need volunteers who would rather have, um, an apprentice, someone have a go. Well, it's okay. not even an apprentice, it's someone no. with no training at all. Yeah. They learn how to do major operations in a week. But, no, not major ones, that's for the final. You do a heart, <laughs> oh, of course, you yeah, you've got to build transplant, that, sure. But you build a heart transplant for the final. <laughs> That's so anyway, amazing. so it's Hilda, and Hilda's not the per she's not operating, she's just the person who needs a bunion no, she's removed. The, she's the foot problem, yeah. So she comes right. in, they have a quick chat have with her. Have a chat with her, how's your life been? Bit of cold play under her. She's yeah, going, yeah. oh, it's terrible, I can hardly walk and all that, and they right. go, right. Here's a family who looks like a baby. <laughs> and then... And you think this is a good, you don't see any problems with this so far, you've not, not identified any concerns yet. If it means you get younger people into other jobs other than singing... Mm. I agree with you. I think it's crazy that everyone now just wants to be uh, a famous, a singer or something, and we don't need them. They're just contriving it. They're, all they're doing is knocking the last one off the top number one spot. It's just a factory. But I'm not talking about everyone should try and be a singer, am I? What I'm saying is sometimes you're allowed to pursue your dreams and they might be, you may, you may fulfill those dreams. Yeah, There's nothing Steve, wrong with that. Steve, it may be that you Steve. want to operate on a woman called Hilda or a bunion. Steve. Pursue that dream. But according Steve. to your negative views, we shouldn't even try and do that Steve, either. What Go I'm on. saying is... Go on. What's he saying? Leona was an example. I'm not saying everyone should try and be like Leona. No, but no. Listen. listen. Listen to his point, Stephen, okay. because he's got a very good point coming up Here it now. comes. This is it. Okay. He hasn't said a, 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 a normal word yet, but he's going to say some now, and they're all going to be profound. People's dreams... Mm. Out their own dreams. Oh, hold on. What do you yeah. mean by that? Okay, keep, that going, no, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. No, 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 no. Yeah. He'll explain. Don't, you don't need to ask any questions. He'll explain. Because they think they know what they want because mm. they see it on the telly. Mm. They see, you know, someone singing a song and they go, "I want to do that." Yeah. So all I'm saying is, change the dreams. Mm. Change the dreams. Yeah. What? Surgery. They're watching that. <laughs> they see an elder happy with a better foot. The doctor's getting all the praise to go, I want a bit of that action. That's what it's about. They don't want to be singers. Mm. They want to be known. They want to be famous. Yeah. So, fine. Have a bit of fame, but do mm. some good. Fix Hilda's foot. Sorry, was that the end of the point? Yeah, because all we've done, we've, we've changed the dreams. Dreams are... Well, um, you've hit on a good point there, because what is astounding is that when, you, you know, um, people are inundated with praise for people who are just clothes horses they are just skinny nobodies who don't do anything except have their picture taken and their role models for you know i'm not talking about um you know anyone in particular but it's just these people who uh, you know want to be seen with other celebrities and marry celebrities and be a celebrity people think that's an easy life because they're getting rewarded for it and yet someone who's stuck in a laboratory trying to come up with a cure for aids they don't know or care about them and okay can i just point out though that if we're going to have a go at people being successful making money and being well known for doing nothing of any value I point you to the man sat opposite me here. <laughs> and that's, hey, I tell you, there's times when I, you know, lie awake at night thinking, what was my dreams? Yeah, but, I have to be a little but I've got a new boy yeah. here. Hold on. And two houses. I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to be a little doctor. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's past me now, there's no way I can, I can go back. Uh, well. But it would have been You're wrong. wrong. 
Carl Pilkington. Hilda? <laughs> what is it? What what now, Hilda, what's up with you? I've got um, I've got terrible piles. Um uh, it's there's some there's some sort of blockage up there. I, I haven't gone to the uh excuse me, I haven't gone to the toilet for a week. Well, Carl, can you unblock Hilda's arse? Now live, unblocking Hilda's arse. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> I thought she had bad feet. No, the feet, were, no. Jed would fixed her feet. There's a lovely job, that's why they stayed in last week. Her arse is worse than her feet. It's because she's been off her feet for so long, because she couldn't walk. Her arse took the brunt of it, and it's just terrible. Piles of burst, it's blocked up there, where all she just eats is cheese because she's so depressed. I'd, I'd just, I'd probably knock it on the head there. I'd Why? just say, because I'd just say, like going back to the, the street thing, I've gone down the wrong avenue. Right. I go, this isn't for me. I didn't know I'd be, you know, eye to eye with this. <laughs> What's up? It's not for me. And that's how you find out that it's not for you by doing it. Right. But at least I gave it a go. So this the same as you had one fight with Leroy, you went along to a dance studio, it was shut, you've seen Hilda's ass, and it's turned you off proctology. Once again, you've just abandoned it. Yeah, well, that's... There's Have no a point. go! Have a go! Just feel inside Hilda's back passage. Feel the blockage. Right. No, because the audience have already decided. They've seen a weakness in me. They're going to vote me out. No, no, there's no point me getting dirty fingers for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carl, if you had to go to a new planet, don't worry about starting life again. They've got sort of like these breeder clones that adore that. But you can choose six people from this world to take to start this whole new world, okay? So you need, you know, as I say, you don't need to So worry what's about, happening here? Is this, is this... It's going to be wiped out, okay? It's going to be wiped out, but there's enough on this spaceship for you and five other people, okay? And they've got them there, they've got these, they've got these sort of breeder clones there, so it's going to be populated, you're going to have the workers, the drones, everything like that, but you want to take six, I suppose, sort of, um, uh, world lords, to teach, to lay down the politics, the the, the teachings, the laws, the government. I'd hate okay. This. I'd hate it. Um, and how long have I got to make a decision on it? Uh, to the end of this podcast. Right, go. Who do you take? Who's the first person you take, and why? Uh, and where where are we going? Mars. <sighs> okay, so a, a planet where there's a, a, a an atmosphere. I've got to know and, where I'm going because I've got uh, to sell it to the people who I'm asking. There's no point when okay, I go. Are you it's, coming it's, with me? Where are you going? I don't know. It's just like this world. There's there's oxygen. There's seas. There's rivers. There's forests. There's animals. Okay, but we're going to populate it with uh, the human race, and you can choose six people to lord over this new uh, kingdom. You want the best people for the job. Yeah. So who, who's the first person? Probably, um, Patrick Moore. Why? <laughs> why? Why would you take Patrick Moore? Just because he he knows knows his way about up there, don't he? He'll know the way. So just just have him. I think that will whoever I pick next. If they see that he's going, they'll go right. You know, it's going to be a long Moore's journey. As it is. You don't want someone who's going to be going. Is it left here? Is it right? Do you know what I mean? And he could play the xylophone on the journey. But, but, is a, Carl, right. is more the most useful person to have if you've only got six? Because he may be very useful getting to the planet, no, but, but once you got there... No, but I've always wanted to meet him as well. I've always wanted a chat, and that'd be a good chance, wouldn't it, when I'm in a rocket? How long's it taking to get to Mars? I don't know, a, a year. That's what I mean, No, it's so. not Mars, it's somewhere else, okay, so it's a year to get there and then... Yeah, well, that's what I mean, so it's a good chance to have a chat with him uh, okay. about stuff. Um, so and more. I think he'd be up for it as well, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, you know... Well, why do you, why do you think that? Just because he's spent his whole life talking about what's going on up there, isn't it? And yet he's never been, and I feel sorry for him. You know, most people, when, they, when they're when they into something, they get to go to a place, don't they? Sure. Uh, people uh, who don't know Patrick Moore is, he's um, an 80-year-old uh, <laughs> astronomer. astronomer. Yeah, that's what I mean, so let him have, well, a, have a bit of a good life. So Moore's on board? Yeah, Patrick Moore, he's he's on. Right, out five others. Four others now. Uh, Jamie Oliver? <laughs> why Why would you take Jamie Oliver? <laughs> just food and that. You just thought you need someone, because they say that, like, you uh, you know, you can feel down if you don't eat. Um, he couldn't convince eight-year-olds to eat a carrot. 
What's he going to do in this brave new world? They're all going to be on turkey twizzlers. I think he's he's got the right attitude. He wouldn't be faffing about. Remember, <laughs> we've we've landed now on this new world. Yeah. I don't know what it's like. The people who listen, made I love go. Jamie Oliver. I think he's great. Yeah. But he wouldn't be in my five people to start a new world. That's all I'm saying. Nor would Patrick Moore, because well, he knew the way. Well, what chef would you pick? I wouldn't <laughs> pick a chef. Why would I pick a chef? Because you want someone who's going to, like I say, food's important. When you're low, there's nothing better. If you're a bit fed up, there's nothing better than having a good- But Carl, I don't think you've quite grasped that these people have to start civilization again. They have to yeah. be wise, wise people who can make the laws. Yeah, and before you do all that, you need a good meal. So, Jamie Oliver, he'll be, that's his job. It's like, when we get there, that's when he kicks in. Right. right He's okay. the first one, really, Can I suggest gets going. A, just to save two places on Patrick Moore and Jamie Oliver, take a map and a cookbook. <laughs> okay, who's number three? What sort of state is this world in? Does it need- Oh, this is gonna take a fucking gardener. It's, yeah. it's like the, it's- uh, It's the world, but new. It's the, it's that, exactly. It's the world, but new, untouched. By humans, there's there've been no fossil fuels burnt, no machinery, no wars, just this Garden of Eden. And you, Patrick Moore and Jamie <laughs> Oliver, pitch up. <laughs> Plus, who else, Carl? Go now. First thought. Attenborough. <laughs> oh God! Again, he's a genius, and he's you know he's a, he's a bit of a hero of mine. But I don't know if we need Attenborough. Just because I reckon if it's a new world, you're saying it's the same, but they always say, don't they, that all worlds are different. So I'd want him there just to sort of, when we're roaming around, because we'll all stick together for a bit, won't we? Mm. Uh, yeah. When we're roaming around. Then they'll be sick of the sight of you. Uh, they go, let's lose Carl. But you've got two men so far who've got a combined age of about 150. <laughs> I mean, if you're starting a brave new world, dare I say it, not going to be around very long. Shouldn't you be taking some younger, fresher blood? No, not really, because they haven't lived, have they? These have lived and they'll, they, they can sort, and they're useful, like I say, Patrick Moore's done his bit, he's got us there. Uh, Oliver, has cooked us a dinner. Day two, I reckon we'd end that on day one there, we'd have a dinner, We'd all have a chat. I don't think you're thinking of the future. I it's think a you're thinking trip. Exactly. It's your I point. think you're thinking of the journey and then the first night. <laughs> ah. Okay, okay. So, so you've day, got day David two. Attenborough, yeah. you've got Patrick Moore, you've got Jamie, <laughs> you've got two other places. I get the feeling that you're not so much recruiting people for a new world as I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. <laughs> As a dinner party with <laughs> yeah. people you'd like to meet that you've seen on the telly. <laughs> oh, come uh, on, in two more. I would text someone who's a bit daft, just so. No, you don't need to, Carl. That's covered. Believe us. Yeah, no, believe no, that's what I mean. Though I don't want them having a go at me, going, "Why are you here?" I'd put point the attention somewhere else to text someone else who sort of wind them up. So who's I'm, that then? Paul Denham or someone like that. <laughs> It really is. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> so you've got you've got Patrick Moore, you've got David Attenborough, you've got Jamie Oliver, and Paul Denham. <laughs> and they're, a starting, new world. they're starting life again. <laughs> okay then, brilliant. Oh god. Right, one more. This is an amazing. This is a, it's going to be. I'd love to go back and visit this in a thousand years. What teachings they laid down. Oh god. Don't know. It have to be uh, a woman. I think you got to have a woman in that little group, haven't you? Is could have another another woman chef or. He's mainly eating. He's got that covered with Oliver, but no, no, I he's got to take Nigella in case he's in a <laughs> cream cake kind of mood. Oh God! Oh God! Delia Smith was furious. She packed her bags <laughs> and everything. Or a nurse. Now you're thinking. Abby Titmus. 